Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on unit circle exercises. Notice that we will not be using our calculator here. The only exception might be that if you are going to check your answer and check it only, then you may use a calculator. But nothing that we do should require one. Uh, so from the last video, you should recall that we, were, we found that we could determine the trigonometric functions of any special angle in any quadrant of the xy plane. And one of the things you should recall is that when we drew our triangles on the xy plane, that the x and y coordinates of the point uh, involved in our triangle corresponded to opposite and adjacent um, sides of the triangle. So the y value always corresponds, and this is true for special angles or, or non-special angles, the y value always corresponds to the length of your opposite side and the x value always corresponds to the length of your adjacent side. And r represented, we used r to represent the hypotenuse, and of course r is calculated via the Pythagorean theorem. So all that, the last video needs to be really clear to you by now, and if it's not, you need to hurry into office hours or through to some other source to get that clarified before you proceed. All right, I want to uh, confess that I don't use the strictest definition of unit circle. And sometimes what I call the unit circle, uh, a, a different math teacher may say, no, technically, Mr. White, that's not officially the unit circle. Um, rather than try to explain here what those nuances are and, and why I make my argument and why some people may disagree with me, I'm going to try to present that in class. But I do think that is better suited for a classroom discussion rather than video. So I'm going to proceed doing things the way that I do, but I'll also present an alternative you know, way that you could look at it uh, in class using a more strict definition of unit circle. Uh, all I need to say about that for right now is that if you see this chart in your book and you're trying to make sense out of it, I invite you to, to put this chart off. Uh, um, wait until class, if you please, to try to make sense out of this. Notice that is different from this previous chart where all these functions involve ratios um, that should feel more familiar to us. Notice that in this chart, in some cases, there's just a single value. And again, I emphasize that that's according to the more official definition of unit circle, which we'll cover in class. So let's go ahead with the example I want to get to. And I want to point out that this is kind of similar to one in your book. It's kind of similar to example 7, page 378 in the book, if we are still using uh, the sixth edition of our pre-calculus book. Uh, there's a, one major difference, though. Um, whereas in that example in the textbook, they uh, ask you to use one trig ratio to find the others, and we've done something similar to that in the past, I hope you recall. In this case, I'm going to amend that and say, let's not just find the other trig ratios, let's find theta itself. And you will have some um, uh, uh, exercises on your assignment that ask you to do just that. So I'm not just making this up just to torture you. That is something you're going to need to know how to do. So let's use one trig ratio to find theta. All right, uh, I have two examples for that, so let's just focus on the first one. And in this first example, the one trig ratio that we know is that cosine of theta is root 2 over 2, and that sine of theta is negative. We also know that. We don't know the actual value, but we, we are told that sine of theta is negative. All right. Uh, to do this type of problem, I like to invoke my good friend and colleague, Dr. Whalen. And I've probably already mentioned in class the Dr. Whalen bow tie. So this is how the Dr. Whalen bow tie works. We, we need to first figure out what quadrant should we be looking at. So I want to emphasize we're not trying to determine which special angle yet. We are simply trying to figure out which quadrant as a first step. And so to figure out which quadrant, I just draw Dr. Whalen bow tie. And of course, this represents four triangles and four different quadrants. And we're going to use a process of elimination to figure out which quadrant we are interested in. Uh, I am at first interested in just the sine, the S-I-G-N sine of the cosine, if, if that's not confusing. Notice that cosine is a positive value here. So again, ignore the actual numerical value. Just observe that it's positive. And remind yourself that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
Well, we know the hypotenuse must always be positive. No exceptions. And if the, the, the ratio of cosine is also positive, that means that adjacent must be positive too, right? If adjacent were negative, then the, the entire ratio of cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, would not give us the positive number that we need. So we know adjacent must be positive as well. So I ask myself, where on this xy plane is the cosine positive? Um, remember, since uh, uh, the adjacent side must be positive, that means that we are either in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. That is where the adjacent side is positive. Over here in the second and the third quadrant, the adjacent side is negative. So that tells me that I can eliminate my second and third quadrant. So I'm just going to erase those two. Those two are out of contention. I now know that my angle must be in the first or fourth quadrants. All right, now time to look at this piece of information, the fact that sine of theta is less than zero. And we're going to use a similar idea. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And once again, since hypotenuse is always positive, and since I see that this ratio must be negative, that means that the opposite side must be negative. I hope this logic is making sense. As always, if it's not, please come see me. Uh, but we look at our two remaining triangles, and I see that one of them has a negative opposite side, the other has a positive. Well, I want the one that's negative, right? So I erase this one, or you can just cross it out in your paper, and we say I'm interested in the fourth quadrant. All right, at this point, I'd say let's try to refine our drawing a little bit. We've answered which quadrant. It's the fourth quadrant. Now let's refine our, our picture a little bit. So let me erase all that. And let's, let's now look at the actual value of cosine. It's root 2 over 2. And I hope that's, that, that you see the clues to which special angle we're dealing with. Um, if it helps you, you may want to rewrite that as 1 over root 2. And that is something that you really need to know. You need to know that root 2 over 2 and 1 over root 2 are the same thing. And again, I invite you to come to office hours if you need to brush up on that skill. All right. Um, so cosine of theta is 1 over root 2. Again, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I draw a picture in which 1 is the adjacent, and root 2 is the hypotenuse. Um, let me make it very clear that this is the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So I'm going to draw it a little bit more precisely, where I really try to draw it accurately. And if this were a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, I'd say try to draw, make it clear whether it's the shallow version or the steep version. I think that's going to be very important for you um, in this process. But I want that middle 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And I will label it with my adjacent of 1 and the hypotenuse, root 2. And I see that the sine, I'm sorry, that the opposite is negative 1. And that checks out again. I just kind of look and double check and make sure those two statements are true, and they are. So I have determined the quadrant is quadrant 4. I have determined that this is the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And my last thing to do is find out what actually is this angle theta. All right, so uh, to find out what theta is, I recall that I am cutting pi into four pieces. So I cut my half pizza into four equal pieces. And I do the same with the bottom half pizza. And I count. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. That is the angle I am interested in. So uh, delete that. And I just want to really emphasize that what I did here is I measured from 0, as I always do in standard position. That is the angle I'm interested in. I'm not interested necessarily in that one. I am interested in the one that goes all the way around. And what tells me that, I should have clarified, pointed this out earlier, is the fact that I'm told this angle needs to be between 0 and 2 pi. If that condition were not there, I could have just as easily said, you know what, I'm just going to go down 1 pi over 4. But no, I need a positive uh, um, angle. And therefore, theta equals 7 pi over 4.
Okay, I hope that was clear. I'm going to go through one more example um, a little bit faster. Okay, but it's the same type of problem. Um, and once again, I'm not finding the other trig functions. I'm finding theta itself. Uh, be clear when you're doing the homework what's being asked of you so you don't do something different than what you're expected. Uh, so let me bring Dr. Whalen back out here. Uh, this one's a little, can, can, could be a little bit tricky. So we're going to go through the same process. We're going to say, let me just draw some angle here without worrying too much about making it the correct special angle. And once again, let's uh, look at just the sign, the S-I-G-N sign. Let's look at the fact that this is po uh, negative. Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Therefore, this is hypotenuse over adjacent. Now, it may be tempting to say that equals, oh, that's negative 2. So that's a negative number over a positive number. But remember, hypotenuse can never be negative. So I need to amend that and say that this is really a positive number, because hypotenuse is always positive, and it's the adjacent that's negative. That tells me that I'm dealing with either the second quadrant or the third quadrant. That's where the adjacent is negative. I will erase the two that I'm not interested in. All right, the fact that cotangent is greater than 0. The fact that cotangent is greater than 0. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Therefore, this is a uh, adjacent over opposite. Well, we've already determined that the adjacent needs to be negative, right? So don't make the mistake of saying that's positive over positive, because again, we already determined that adjacent is negative. So we need to say that this is a negative number over another negative number. That's what gives me, that, that's one way to get a positive cotangent. Oops. OK, so. I've already know that my adjacent is negative. It's the opposite side that also needs to be negative. And that tells me that I'm dealing with the third quadrant, not the second. And the second quadrant, opposite is positive. So again, I've narrowed down my quadrant. I know it's quadrant three. That's the first order of business. Now I need to look a little bit more carefully and say, which special triangle is this? That's our second order of business. So secant, one more time. That's hypotenuse over adjacent. In this case, I will now look at the actual value. And again, um, I will not put negative 2 over positive 1. I will put positive 2 over negative 1, since hypotenuse must be positive. All right, I want to redraw my drawing a little more carefully here. And this is where I'd say you really want to be attentive to drawing a, a, a decent picture. Make sure that if the hypotenuse is positive 2 and the adjacent is negative 1, notice that the opposite according to the ratios of our special triangles, must be of magnitude root 3. And given that it's in the third quadrant, it must be negative 2. Notice that the opposite side needs to be longer versus the, the relatively shorter adjacent. So draw it as such. Draw it such that the opposite side is longer. Notice that that means our orientation of our 30, 60, 90 degree triangle is a steep orientation. It looks like that rather than the shallow orientation like that. All right, negative root 3, negative 1, 2. Uh, again, I consider how I've cut up this pizza. I've cut up this pizza pie, or this half pizza, into three equal um, pieces. Uh, I'll remind you, like in the last video, sometimes I like to move the, get the y-axis out of the way just to avoid confusion. And I see that this angle, this positive angle, is 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. That is my answer. Theta equals 4 pi over 3. Again, if I didn't have that restriction of being a positive number between 0 and 2 pi, I also could have said negative 2 pi over 3. But I need to observe this restriction. All right, uh, your turn to try that out. I hope that all made sense. Here are the exercises. You know what to do. Pause the video. I will reveal, reveal the answers in just a moment. All right, I hope you've done your part. Let's take a look at the answers. There they are, along with a little sketch of what you should have uh, drawn on your paper. Uh, please come by and see me if you're not getting this. This is where the course starts to get, course starts to get tough. Please come handle your business.